Welcome back to episode four. And this week we're with a friend of mine, Chris Juong. He's not only a killer on the mats at Jiu Jitsu, but he's also co-owner of Duo Duo Ice Cream. Co-owner, is that right, Chris? Yes. Yeah, co-owner of Duo Duo Ice Cream. So thanks for coming on. Essentially, what made you want to start your own business? Um, I'm not actually too sure. I think it was something that uh, I think just like after finishing high school, um, when everyone was kind of choosing their paths um, into uni and studying and, and work, um, I realized there was nothing that really interested me um, down that kind of route. And um, something that had always interested me was starting my own business from that age when I was around year 11, year 12. Um, and yeah, I think it just kind of did research around people's businesses and, and um, the interest just grew from there. And that's kind of when I knew. So year 11 and 12. Yeah. And when did the um, ice cream slash desserts I was gonna come ask. in? Yeah. Where, how did that come into play? As a <laughs> business? Yeah. So uh, it's funny because we, like me and my business partner now, uh, we've been childhood mates um, and we kind of both have a passion for business and running our own business. Um, and we came up with heaps and heaps of ideas um, you know, we, we originally wanted to do like come out with it with our own app and we wanted to do heaps of things. Um, but one thing that we both love was desserts um, yeah. and ice cream. And I think that's something that it was just like a mutual thing that we loved. And um, we felt like there was no one really doing really good ice cream um, in the way that we do it um, now currently. So, yeah, that's kind of where that whole thing sparked. Did you have... Did you have any like experience making ice cream before that? Zero. Yeah, really. Yeah, we had to. We had to. Man, we had to do so much trial and error. Like, uh, I was just. I was actually just reminiscing about it today. But we, I think, we literally did like over like three hundred trials for the ice cream recipe, um, just to get it to what we wanted. Were you watching videos or someone like teach you pay like a a chef or something or just? <laughs> yeah, I think it was at, at first. It was like all right, we'll just read up on all the, literally all the ice cream and gelato books we can yeah. um, just to get a base understanding. And then after that, we kind of took a few classes. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much what got us started. Um, and I think like till this day, we're still learning more and more. Like we're speaking to food technologists and things like that to kind of yeah. understand more, but it gets pretty deep and nerdy. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Costin hasn't tried your ice cream yet. Costin's a pretty oh, good so you need to... <laughs> I was, um, out. <laughs> I was <laughs> good, yeah. I was browsing the old website today actually and um almost got myself a twelve pack of donuts just quietly. <laughs> um, but um, mum's voice was in the back of my head telling me to lose weight. So I stopped. His mum's a bit of a Nazi when it comes to a <laughs> log mother. Um, nice. when who like cause so you started with your mate, who brought the conversation? first uh what's your I, we actually I mean, don't remember it was I, all i remember was kind of like a mutual thing so we started off with deep fried ice cream that's kind of like what we started off with and what people kind of know us for yeah, a few yeah. articles that i saw on that um, yeah long, yeah that's right yeah so um yeah i think it, it grew from our love of that dessert so um i don't know if you guys know much about fried ice cream but it's something you get after like a chinese in a chinese restaurant I know it tastes good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've had it. Yeah. So yeah, they they do it in a lot of Chinese restaurants. Um and it was a dessert that me and me and Dylan really loved. Um, but to be honest, I, we felt like most Chinese restaurants, it's not the main part of the meal. Like it's some it's just, it's more like a side dish. So they don't really pay too much attention to it. And like basically they don't give the dessert the love that it needs. Um, and yeah. no one was really doing it well. So yeah, we just kind of like, all right, let's literally come up with the best fried ice cream in Sydney, in Australia and do it with our own ice cream flavors, uh, make our own ice cream. And yeah, that's kind of where it all began. Did, did Dylan go to uni? Like what made you guys think let's not pretty even big, it's a with a pretty big, big call or anything like that? Cause like, it's a pretty ballsy move. Cause I know 
I've had conversations with friends, similar stuff, like transitioning from school to uni being like, oh yeah, we'll just start a business or thinking to myself, but then to actually have the balls to take a step to do that and to not have that security of a degree. It's like a delay as well as a security. Cause it's like, oh, it's like another three years, another five years kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well for me, I actually, yeah. um, I actually went to uni, um, and graduated. So I did, went to UTS, yeah, um, yeah. did my, yeah, did my commerce <laughs> degree there. Oh, uh, okay. finished. Yeah. Finished there, worked a year at PayPal. Um, and then, and we then called it quits life. after a year. Sorry. So you were always doing duo duo on the side kind of thing. Uh, no. So I basically, um, I think I would kind of trialing, trialing it for about a year just coming up with the recipes and everything like that once yeah. we had the product and the kind of strategy that we knew we were happy with i was like all right i'm gonna quit my job <laughs> then oh. that's it never look back man fucking hell that's pretty bold <laughs> was there yeah. a lot of like family and friends was there backlash from you because it's obviously a different path yeah yeah for sure um my, my parents Not told happy. me no yeah my grandma was like no um like a lot of people were uh, most of my friends were pretty supportive to be honest but it was more family um and the ones closest to me they were like look you know like you got a good job now good paying job like why are you giving it up to sell ice cream that kind of thing my mom would have kicked me out of the house straight up <laughs> well mate it was, it was honestly it was it was like close like we were like they were really against it um but you know after a while they come around <laughs> yeah slowly slowly yeah, yeah. How do you like, get you? Oh, you go. Nah, you go, handsome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. So I think um, at, at what what I kind of told them was, if if I do fail, then I can always go back and and it pick up it. my old job or find a new job. You know, you at always least I have a degree. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it's good. I was going to ask, how quickly did you get a customer base and how did you get that initial like i don't know what is that how to call, what to call it but the initial interest in your product which then led to a bigger customer base and or to where it is today really like did um, you just do a lot of your own marketing and facebook advertising and instagram or yeah like, for sure so yeah we've i've done the um the marketing and socials uh from the very beginning um and in terms of like, how do we get our customer base? I think it's been very gradual um, over, we've been open for about four years now. Um, I was going to ask you that, how long it's been open for. Yeah. Yeah. So we started in um, 2017 in September. So yeah, almost coming up to four years. Um, when we first started, we, we just had our food truck. So we went around to a few markets um, and I think from the start, there was a pretty good interest in our product because no one had really done it before. So like generally when you go to like food markets and stuff, it's more or less the same thing over and over again, uh, the same kind of stalls. Um, but with us, you know, we're coming up with something fresh and new. So we, we gained a bit of interest there. Um, and then I think kind of building on that, we like our number one focus is to come up with creative innovative products that are exciting basically um and always look after our customers with quality and products so i think as long as you can kind of satisfy those needs then we'll keep growing our customer base um because we're not like a like an old traditional ice cream company yeah. it's like yeah. run by you know like most of the time it's run by like older generation people it's kind of boring um so yeah we kind of bring that like new fresh innovative thinking around it the donuts do look very hip <laughs> the donuts, yeah. like everything man the the there's like do you do your own designs as well because the the bloody the blue writing and all that <laughs> obviously it's, it's like the whole thing's very good yeah thank you, you thank you thank you your pan yeah. very nice the pan I mean, flavor yeah <laughs> when did the shop open the uh, shop opened in uh april this year oh yeah yeah so what made you swap from trucks to like a proper brick and mortar um so yeah we had our truck um we just you started with a truck because it's kind of like budget sorry the truck's still like operating in Strathfield road yeah 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, at the moment, we're closed due to lockdown. Yeah, we're... Um, but yes, yeah, the truck's still operating at the moment. Um, we kind of just used the truck at the start because it was more of a budget-friendly option for us. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think it was basically just, we just needed to build up enough capital until we could finally move into a larger production facility. Um, and the one in Roselands um, just happened to have a free space out the front of the production facility as well, which we could turn into a store. So it kind of worked out really well. It's a good spot because there's a car park there as well. Yeah, hundred percent. There, so people are around. Exactly. Um, yeah. Can I go back? Because the idea of people having the balls to do something that's yeah. different. Talent something- can't wrap his head around. I, I just I love <laughs> it. what with your mate as well. Did your mate go to uni? Yeah, yeah. So he went to uni as well. Almost as well. Um, uh, he studied pharmacy and then finished his pharmacy degree and um, and then went on to do his an, an accounting degree actually. So when when you would throughout your degree, was it always in the back of your head? I don't want to do this, or I want to start my own business, and this will be a tool to get me to start my own business. That was always. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Like when, when I was doing my grade, to be honest, man, I was like one of the, probably one of the worst uni students. Like I was, I was that kid that just did not give a fuck. Yeah. Um, and just kind of did the minimum to get through it. Um, more so to, I guess, like one, keep my parents happy. Um, and just at least to have something to say like, oh, like at least I've gone through uni kind of thing. Um, yeah. You but, can fall back on it as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, man, like when, when I was like, you know, what, in uni back at that age i literally just didn't care about it i, I kind of knew i wanted to do my own thing and i just it almost like made me lazier at uni as well so yeah did you work whilst you were did you do any jobs in the field other than paypal while yes you- oh i worked at the star as a as right. like a table games dealer <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah that was like my, oh, my role during uni yeah, yeah. nice very nice it's it, it's interest it i find it interesting because like I graduate at the end of this year and I start at Combank and there's a part of me that's like, Oh, I don't really know if I want to do. Then there's a part of me that's like, you know, it's a good opportunity. You don't know whether you'll like it or not till you start. So that's why I'm in that awkward position now. That's why I'm like, I don't know. I just want to see your experience and stuff with it. Are like, you what- like, are you kind of like look or pondering on like thinking about doing your own thing? Well, I've always liked the idea of it, but I just wouldn't know what to do and also the i the the job is a good job and i i feel like i'll enjoy it as well but i feel like there's always a part of me that would like to do something on my own eventually well that's kind of like how this little podcast thing started as well because we both had conversations about it and we're mates and we're like well we might as well we did it last lockdown and then we're kind of just trying to make it a thing now yeah yeah Yeah. awesome man this is different to a proper business with like a revenue and a product yeah yeah well i think like doing something on the side is a really good start whilst you've got like a secure job and yeah and then it lets you like dabble in it you know and then you can slowly take the step yeah okay talent wants to be a big shot developer in a couple of years oh uh, yeah definitely no carson does construction that's what he i like he wants to start his own thing in that area as well because he awesome he works like a dog oh, i'm um, starting to think about um company branching out a bit i guess and doing my own thing because i've been at the company i'm with now for five years through uni so i've gotten to a point where i'm a bit over working for someone um yeah what kind um, of work are you doing oh uh, it's project management so we do like a bunch of stuff but we've like for example the five years i've been there been part of like projects like the william english hotel in work farm which is like a big like auction center and horse stables with a like 200 room hotel um, did a like university project, a couple of warehouses. I'm doing a swimming pool now, just stuff like that, managing people and design and all that type of stuff. Yep. So I've got a reasonable understanding over five years of how it all works. Um, so Absolutely. I sort of want to have a crack and just cause take the step and I can always fall back on my work and working for a builder rather than being yep. on myself. But that's, yeah, that's why I talented before we started this podcast, try to, maybe like expand our horizons and try see if talk to interesting people yeah and try see if it really would be for us because we both sort of want to like 
spread our wings for lack of a better phrase. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, but, um, I, I, yeah, honestly, I wish I had like, um, so, like people I could kind of um, talk to. I found it super hard to find people that were doing their own thing um, back when I was in uni. And that was kind of like all I was interested in, but I just, I didn't know anyone and I didn't have anyone in my network that knew anyone either. Like everyone just kind of went down the route of graduating uni and going in straight into full time. So it was, it was pretty hard, but um, yeah, it's. You're here now, you're where you are now. So it all paid off, I guess. What, what made you want to start with like a partner, a business partner, as opposed to just going by yourself? Uh, Oh, this is a good, tough question. Um, to be honest, I, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't really give it much thought. I think. Really? Um, because, yeah, I don't know. I'm an overthinker, man. I'd be like <laughs> everything to every detail. That's probably yeah. that kit. Like, you need to actually move as well. You know. You yeah. Can't... I think there's like a fine line between like, you know, like overanalyzing versus not analyzing yeah. enough and being reckless. Yeah. Um, and that's what like, yeah, kind of doing your own thing is, is a lot about. Um, but yeah, I think back then, honestly, back then I was, I was young and like, I just didn't yeah. really think about that too much. Like I knew Dylan was a really good mate of mine. We had always talked about it. So yeah, it just didn't really come to my thought that like, oh, maybe I should do something by myself. Did Dylan go to Newington? Was that like? He did, yeah. yeah. How do you know? We went to Newington. Yeah, we went to oh. Newington. Yeah, I represent. <laughs> I see. No, so I what, what year did you guys graduate? 2016. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're, so we're, we graduate 2010. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it would have been a few years before. Oh, you look younger yeah. than me, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's no, it's the no hair tag. Nah, <laughs> yeah. I thought it was the beard. Man, you look, you look meaner with that haircut. Oh yeah. Hopefully my like, you two improves. Yeah. <laughs> Plus five skill points on the match. Oh, hopefully. <laughs> I just have to learn how to pass a guard first. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Jiu-jitsu chat. Yeah, sorry, mate. <laughs> Mustin doesn't really do physical activity. <laughs> wow, what a way. I mean, I've been going to walk every day this lockdown. It's been been good. Get my oh, yeah, 15,000 right. steps in. How's, how's, how's the business been going with COVID and stuff? Because yeah, I saw you deliveries. Were... Deliveries. I'm not asking you, mate. <laughs> no, I just see all the donuts and get hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's been uh it's been good like yeah it's all good yeah it's like we closed our stores um which obviously was a big call for us um Mm. but i think just like having the risk of one getting COVID and as well as like being named and shamed um, across the platforms would kind of ruin us um so yeah we kind of decided like we'd, we'd prefer to just open for online at least make something and we can still keep our wholesale side of our business running and we can still keep our staff in jobs um, and minimize the risk. So yeah, I think like the online deliveries have uh, are still growing and it's, and it's really good during this time. So it keeps us going, keeps us like employing all our staff. So yeah, man, can't complain. It's interesting how that happens. Like if a place goes on the news and they say they have COVID, no one goes there anymore, but you'd think, they do a deep clean and everything. That'd be like the least likely place for them to get COVID again. But I know what you mean by that name and shame thing. Yeah. It's like my mum will be like, oh no, we can't go there. They had a COVID case last week. But yeah. it's like, there's no, yeah, I know what you mean. But it's 100%. Like, like flying like a Malaysian airline plane after the yeah. main 370, but you'd think they'd be the safest because they would have had all, yeah, the, I don't hear it again. all the audits and everything. Yeah. yeah, straight out, man. Like you have to pay for like a, a super expensive deep clean and, and then you also cop the loss in all the business because no yeah. one wants to come to you. What now. are the fines like for businesses these days? They'd be pretty pretty hefty, or yeah. they still just get yeah. thousand for the individuals. Uh, for for what in particular? Like if you get caught breaching any COVID laws, do you get fined? Is it just you and your partner to get fined a thousand each, or does the business cop like a monster fine? Uh, it'll because we're a company. I think we'll we'll get fined. Uh, they'll have some sort of big fine for that um i'm not too sure to be honest like they've they constantly change it so time, yeah. yeah at the end of the day i'm just like look man we just we follow it to the t and yeah. that's it like there's the not, not no worth risking it man yeah, yeah um, wasn't even, she wasn't even wearing a mask around the cafe the other day yeah straight up naughty naughty 
Uh, um, one question I did have for you from the beginning was Talon obviously yeah. talks about jujitsu quite a bit and he sort of fancies himself as a bit of a role. No, no. <laughs> no, he doesn't. But um, how does jujitsu fit into all this? Because do you do it as an outlet or like what got you started in jujitsu and then what sort of part does it play in your life? Because all my friends now, as you probably know from Ryan, you, yeah. Ryan Lachlan, George, Taylor have started doing jujitsu. And Chris, mate. And Another Chris guy. and Chris. Um, and yeah, I was just wondering like, what sort of role does it play in your life and why did you start doing jujitsu? Yes. Uh, I mean, it, it plays an integral part, I'd say. <laughs> Probably, probably you'd probably hear the same thing from Taylor and all the other guys. But like uh, for for me personally, it's it's an outlet. Um, it's like literally, I I finish my work and I'm tired, I'm mentally wrecked, and then I go to jujitsu and I get wrecked some more. But somehow after, I feel so much better than I did when I walked in. Um, and that's yeah, that's just kind of like. I don't know something about it it's just like it's literally i can shut off my brain it's yeah. physically tiring but it's refreshing for my mind um that's kind of like how i like to put it so a good way to put it yeah what um, made you start out of curiosity because like i started i went and watched ryan compete because he, he messaged us all and he's like oh if you guys want to come I'm yeah, we went to his first comp and i watched mm. him like get a guy in a headlock and throw and i'm like oh fuck i want to do this so that's what <laughs> made me start what, yeah, yeah. What, made you start out of curiosity um it was i was just always into ufc like oh. back when i was young as well and i just Lock, always that's watched Lachlan. it yeah and i literally just one day i was just like i gotta do this thing like it's something i had always wanted to do and i, I don't know why i just snapped it one day i was like oh, i'm doing it <laughs> and then that's never looked back man it was best decision i ever made yeah better than starting a business but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just dying to get back on the mats now. Oh yeah, no. Same. So, were you the one inquiring about anyone that had any mats around tailing yesterday? Or was that someone else? That was Ryan. Oh, I Ryan. got mats at mine. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't tell him that. Ryan was asking about it. He wants thinking of buying some. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, like, do, do, it, do you have someone to them. train with? Like, what's the point of the mats? I have no one to train with. But back. <laughs> Back during last lockdown, I did. Um, one of my friends. Do, do you know Michael? Which does he go to the gym? He does, but very rarely. Um, he's okay. kind of like who I started with, but he he uh, rarely goes. He has a he just had a kid as well. Um, so uh, uh, yeah, back back in last lockdown, I bought the mats, and uh, me and him were like just well, drilling. We'll probably need it a couple more times. We'll probably have a couple more lockdowns. Who knows? Yeah, we'll see. I, I bought a boxing bag like six years ago. I think, I've, <laughs> I think I've used it twice. <laughs> are you thinking about doing it or are you like... Yeah, on, honestly, nah. after everyone joined, I got a little sensation like maybe I should try this. Yeah. And then I thought it was too mainstream. And I'm trying to convince, <laughs> my, I'm trying to convince myself to join a boxing gym because I need a lot of cardio fitness from boxing. And I feel yeah. like I'm a bit too overweight for jiu-jitsu. At this point in time, uh, <laughs> no, there's no such thing as uh, yeah. no such thing as being too overweight for jujitsu. It became um, mainstream in our group though, because so many pe- like of our school friends. Yeah, so even but now that like the people that don't do it are like, nah, fuck that, I'm not doing that. Everyone else does. That. Man, you guys are lucky. Like, I'm trying to get. I'm at that stage where I'm trying to get all my friends to do it, but no one's doing it. It's literally just me. Oh, <laughs> we've even got one of our friends that do it at a different gym as well, and then. Yeah, we've got a friend that does that at a different gym now as well. So we want to fight him at a comp or something. Oh, that would be I'm bad. annoyed because I enrolled for that comp that got cancelled because of the lockdowns. So yeah, I was yeah. keeping myself up, weight cutting, which is I've struggled. I struggled yeah, he, I was going. He was keeping me up to date every day about how many, <laughs> how many, how many grams he lost that <laughs> every hour. Hey, Chris, did you get bronze in your I comp? I did. Yeah, I did. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, was, they seem pretty intense those things i saw like it yeah not for me i don't think it's like it's um i don't know man after this lockdown i'm just like ready to kinda, go i'm ready to go 100 percent. i'm ready to go but yeah. like i feel like just just kind of like mentally going through my comp and my experience with it like yeah i just feel like you you you'll have your experience when you do your first comp as well i just 
think to myself, what am I going to do as soon as I bow? Like, what's the breakdown <laughs> I'm going to do? Yeah, yeah. Thinking, it's just like a whirlwind of emotion. And I'm just like, I just crack myself every day, just look, looking at my matches and being like, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, he's like, like, you'll probably remember like 10% of what you know when you're doing it. Like, it's just like, grr. Yeah, that's yeah, literally, it. that's all it is. <laughs> it's just like the grr in you that you need to come up. <laughs> Which is, 100%, yeah. that's what you, like, is interesting for me, but we'll see. A bit yeah. of mongrel. I don't know. <laughs> for, for the, um, the business, the business, what do you, do you guys have like a five year plan, 10 year? Like, do you guys, cause I know some people that are like, f- like, fuck, we'll just do it. And then they start acting like what you said before, there needs to be like a fine line of yep. thinking or planning and doing, do you guys have like a five year, 10 year plan? Like when was donuts? Because you, you started with fried ice cream. Yep. How did donuts get into it? And like, what's the next kind of steps for you guys? Yeah, I think, um, uh, how do I put it? So f- for us, I'd say like our long-term plan would be more around like three, like three to five years. Um, I, I think any more than that, it's just too hard to predict the kind of route and future. So I don't even bother wasting my my energy on that. So three to five year plan, we do like a rough outline of like, okay, this is like uh, X amount of stores we want to be in. And this is X amount of shops that we want to open up. Um, and that's kind of like, that's it, not too detailed. Um, but I guess as we go more like into the one year, that's when it gets like more granular into like what we really want. Um, but yeah, I'd say like for our five year plan, um, we'd like to open up at least, another two or three stores um, in Sydney and then potentially explore stores in other States as well. The one thing I want to know, which links a bit to something that I've been wanting to figure out for my own sake is initially when you opened it up, did you have to get a loan from a lender or a bank? And if you did, did you have to present a business plan to them or how did that whole process end up happening or did you just use your own capital that you saved up over that few years um studying and working and that one year at PayPal? yeah uh for, for me i was it was literally just savings from from my working um over the years um i'm not too sure how how it goes with starting getting a loan for starting a business um i'd say that it would be i i, I i'm not too sure i'd say it's pretty hard um you'd have to come up with like a pretty good solid case. Um, but yeah, for me, it was just, we tried to come up. That's why we went with the food truck initially because it was more low budget um, and we could kind of afford it. And we literally started off with like a two liter ice cream machine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were running that little thing for like, to like 4 a.m. in the morning every day. Jesus, I ate that much yeah. in a sitting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I don't know. Fried ice cream question I forgot to ask. Do you double batter the ice cream? Oh, wow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I was always wondering because I'm like, if it's single batter, wouldn't it melt? That's what I was wondering. Yeah, Look at I you, man. Get no, it. With yeah, you know, I, I double fried a bit of halloumi and I fried it as well. <laughs> while we're in lockdown and I'm just, like, if, wouldn't this melt if it was ice cream? But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> do you do a bit of cooking? Me? Yeah, I like cooking. Oh, nice. I took schnitzel then for dinner, which was nice. But yeah, <laughs> beautiful chef. I've been sending some photos to Costin and the other the couple yeah, of. He's them. been sending a few messages about his creations and yeah, because I I'm not working now as well. I can't work and I there's no uni on, so I'm just at home all day. Because uh, I'm in Goldwood, so I'm in that LGA that's locked down. I so can I've confirm got... he's extremely bored. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and slow. Yeah, Roselands can't even open anyway because you're in that LGA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where? Yeah, that's yeah. You're five minutes from me. That's why I've been. But the donuts. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. When did donuts get involved? Uh, so yeah, donuts got involved at the start of this year. So um, uh, we took on uh, pastry chef um about halfway through last year, um, just to kind of help us out with flavor creations development, um, and doing baked goods and uh other desserts was always something that me and Dylan had always wanted to do. Um, so that's kind of why we decided to bring on a pastry chef to run that. Um, and then, yeah, so they, they started halfway through last year. 
um, once we moved into our new facility at the start of this year, we actually had the space to do it. So we're like, all right, we let's, let's come up with a few recipes for, I guess, like a few different products. So we, we had played around with like doing tarts and cookies. Um, and then I think, yeah, donuts was just something that we, we thought made a lot of sense to go with ice cream. Um, and it was also one of the products that we, I think we made the best as well. Um, yeah. so uh, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of how that all started. And I was going to say logistically donuts, especially in this day and age where you're delivering everything, they're a pretty, um, easily deliverable item as opposed to like ice cream. I know you can deliver it, but donuts is a lot easier. So it would yeah. help in that regard as well. Yeah. No, well, yeah. you got to keep ice cream cold, so you got to get a refrigerated truck. Whereas donuts, Don't you can. The guy who actually does it. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just having a chat. <laughs> no, I'll yeah, eat, exactly. I'll, you're, you're, I'll eat anything. Man, yeah. you're 100 percent right. But like, yeah, doing the both for deliveries is actually like a logistical nightmare because when you get a customer that orders donuts plus ice cream, mm, yeah. how do you how do you deliver <laughs> yeah. that? If like how do you, we so what we're literally doing now is we're getting multiple delivery vans and we're filling up the the whole front section the whole front seat with donut boxes <laughs> yeah and then ice cream in the back yeah but um that, that yeah that's literally what we're doing now so i'm actually gonna have to order some donuts after this now yeah <laughs> i'll make a nice little impulse buy donut that's what i want to try which one the cream brulee one. Oh, that's our bestseller yeah i haven't tried that one that's the yeah. one i'll try um so i didn't even know do you guys ship to businesses as well like cafes and stuff yeah so we do wholesale um That's to businesses to supermarkets um and restaurants oh, okay yeah is that a pretty is that a large like component of your business at the moment or is it still mostly out of your um like flagship store and- yeah um at the moment it's not obviously because all the restaurants are closed but um usually it is yeah it's about i'd say 30 30 percent of our like revenue yeah. stream in comparison to the truck to the store if you so 30 percent is wholesale yeah where would you get your income from or the most sales from the truck or the store uh the store the store definitely does more obviously because uh it's open a lot more hours as well um with the truck we're only open from thursday to sundays and- um yeah so the store the store brings in a decent amount and the wholesale as well i think it's probably upwards of 30 percent okay and you guys are you guys always with chevo's burgers in stratfield yeah we are how did that relationship start uh he's a friend he's a friend of he's a cousin of one of our close friends um yeah and he actually came to us like before he even started the whole thing so he's like he's i think he's only 21 now actually yeah i i was i went to uni with him i remember oh that's right you did yes yes um, so yeah, Ali came to us like before he wanted to start it and he came to us kind of asking us for advice on how to run a food truck and how it's all done. Yeah. Um, and he told us his idea and at, originally at the start, like I was kind of brutally honest to him. I was like, honestly, man, like running a burger okay. truck is, yeah. it's not an easy thing to do. Cause like, yeah. there's so much competition. There's yeah. already so many burger trucks out there. And there's burger places everywhere as well. Exactly. Um, and I was just kind of running him through like, you know, like how are you going to differentiate yourself and uh, yeah, just giving him the spiel. Um, and yeah, he, he went on and did it and absolutely killed it. Like exceeded like everyone's expectations blew up on TikTok. And, yeah. Yeah. He's doing well. You guys don't do TikTok, do you? I don't know. I don't have nah, that. I don't <laughs> do TikTok. <laughs> Your reaction just then. Just now. <laughs> Uh, but Instagram and Facebook's enough for me. I, TikTok's like a new gen thing. I just can't get amongst yeah. it, man. <laughs> Even I'm not amongst TikTok. <laughs> Even me. Social media mogul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy who it. deleted all the social media to get away from it for a bit. You did that? Oh, I deleted Instagram and Snapchat. I still don't have Instagram. I've just got the... He's like, got our two thinking apes Instagram. Yeah, good, and then yeah. I got Snapchat back maybe like three weeks ago. Okay. After like about a year, how how'd you feel after like all? Oh, no, it was actually good because I I don't know it was um I only had Messenger for a long time and that was it. Deleted the Facebook actual Facebook like newsfeed app as well, 
and it was heaps good because I just need to talk to my mates. And then the rest of it just uh, like a waste of time because I used to look at my screen time and see that I spend like two hours an hour on Instagram looking at a variety of things and set unrealistic expectations for uh, myself and a lot of other people, I guess, from yep. what you see on that. Um, so I thought yeah, I would give it a try. I'm not having it and it ended up working all right. But now with the podcast, I've got to start trying to look for fake uh, people on Instagram that might <laughs> might um, <laughs> bite the fishing line. Yeah. It's true. It's hard getting up. Uh, like the beauty, the beauty and the geek guy is apparently a hot, hot property at the moment. Yeah, we've so. been messaging a lot of people <laughs> on the podcast. Uh, the beauty and the geek guys. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you run the Jua Jua Insta and Facebook? So do you have to run that as well? As yeah, I run that. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Been oh, running it from day one. All the social media time then. On, like, oh on man, Facebook. it's heaps. Yeah, I, I've like honestly, I'm. I want to do a cleanse as well. I just feel like yeah. every time I, every time I scroll on Facebook or Instagram, I never leave. I never like close my phone and feel better afterwards than I yeah. did the first time. That's what I mean. There's a lot of stuff on that that's just like. Yeah, I can't really explain it too well, but <laughs> it has an effect. <laughs> like, on when you. have you ever like gone through and been like, "Yeah, that was a good scroll." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> never, never. Or well, it's like you're scrolling and you like, you know, you, there's nothing to do and there's no reason for you to be scrolling, but you're still scrolling. That's yeah, yeah. especially now because we're at home. Like, I feel like everything's fucking channeled to do that. Yeah, you know, all the bad habits, you know. It's that dopamine hit. Literally. <clears throat> I don't know, man. But yeah, that's it, really. Do you have any products you want to like expand to right now that you know you want to do? Oh, yeah. With the donuts and ice creams for now. Yeah, so we want to do a melon pan. Um, I don't that? know if you guys yeah. know what that is. I've got no idea. I have no idea. It sounds yeah, good. So it's, I'll try. <laughs> it's basically a Japanese um, baked milk bread. Um, so oh. it's like nice, white, fluffy, sweet bread. Um, but it's baked with like a crunchy biscuit top. So mm. it's like crunchy and soft Google. and fluffy on the inside. And basically you slice it open, put a scoop of ice cream in there. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's like a, a super Jesus. like common dessert in Japan. Um, but no one kind of really does it well here. So that's something that I've always wanted to do. So I think we're going to, we're going to work on that. That so sounds... it'll come out. Yeah. We went to Japan. Yeah. Like... Why didn't we try that? <laughs> uh, that's... Oh, you guys didn't have it over there? No. And we oh, had on the podcast man. two days, two episodes ago. No, last episode, we had our tour guide from Japan. He was telling us about, yeah. he was like his own tour guide and stuff. And he never even mentioned that. Oh, dude, oh. you guys are missing out. Yeah. Well, was, hurry, was, hurry up. That was my favorite thing. <laughs> hurry up, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When's yeah. the come around? Uh, we got to, we got to, we're like, honestly, we're super busy at, at the moment. So it's kind of a staffing slash production machinery thing so as soon as we figure that out um we can do it but uh, yeah i'm hoping like we can get that out by the end of the year that'll be cool i'll yeah. definitely try that yeah Always scouring instagram <laughs> <laughs> yeah you might get an order a big order from that i'll see how we go <laughs> big order from a big <laughs> hopefully a bit smaller by that stage but we'll see we'll yeah. see exactly <laughs> anyway Man, I've been pumping the donuts during this lockdown, eh? Oh, yeah? That's not good, mate. No jujitsu to lose it all. Dude, no jujitsu. I'm surrounded by ice cream and donuts. Not a good, <laughs> yeah, not a good mix. I always thought as if you wouldn't just be, be fat. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it sounds like a pretty decent life, to be honest. you experiment the flavor. Like, you got to try the flavors when you're, ex- like, experimenting. Like, yeah. You've got to find a good product. So, you've got to be eating a lot of ice cream. Yeah. I, I volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> honestly it's not for everyone I'm, I'm a massive sweet tooth but like i've literally been averaging like a donut and a half a day plus like half a scoop every day that's not that bad no, that's all right that just shows you're healthy <laughs> yeah that's breakfast no literally uh, every day though <laughs> yeah but i've seen Costa open a packet of chips and finish the packet of chips with just sitting there like no one's around <laughs> yeah within <laughs> within a couple minutes yeah, that's a bit. Good. It's a bit. It's a bit sad, really. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You, I'm sure when jujitsu starts, it will burn off anyway. Yeah, hopefully, man. Oh, dude, I'm dying to get back on the mat, eh? 
know, I know. Anyway, uh, shall we wrap it? Cause got any questions? Um, no, I'm, I'm all, all good. I think it's been a yeah? pretty pretty entertaining little. You see the tart. little potty. Oh yeah, seven fifty, perfect. All right, thanks for that, Chris. I appreciate thanks, it, man. Guys. Appreciate your time, heaps, and thank you. Appreciate you having me on. Thanks, guys.